assalamu alaikum dear students uh, and welcome to lecture number 5 of week 11 uh, today uh, we are going to talk about the subduction zones and the earthquake intensity so in our previous lecture uh, we talked about uh, the crustal fault uh, uh, strike slip normal reverse or thrust or an oblique okay but what about plate boundary or interfaces between plates uh, now when you have a plate to plate interface you are not dealing with crustal fault you are dealing with the entire plate they are massive so when you have these plate to plate boundaries uh, and you have compression going on we have uh, what we call subduction zone subduction zones uh, are massive interplate boundaries uh, that are huge uh, and they deal with enormous amounts of pressure enormous amounts of stress Uh, and can produce enormous earthquakes now as with a subduction zone we generally have two types of subduction zone earthquake event we have that what call as interplate event even interplate in intraplate so interplate event occur in a place where it basically sounds like it intermeet between two different plates so at the interface between the oceanic plate uh, that subducting and the continental plate that is riding on the top of the oceanic plate so a great interface between two plates is where we get interplay event a rupture on an interplay event is what we refer to as as a mega thrust earthquake uh, and these are those big magnitude 8.8 magnitude 8.5 magnitude 9 magnitude 9.5 events they are massive okay uh, now that ocean crust that getting shot and pushed deep down the continental crust that the oceanic crust is getting bent getting stressed uh, and getting pulled uh, and all sort of strain is occurring with the thing now as that the crust is getting recycled back into the mantle uh, it's not going to go quietly and often times what happen is that bending and stuff can cause crack and earthquake in that oceanic crust as it bends Uh, and gets pulled beneath the continental crust uh, and back into the mantle those types of earthquakes that occur inside of the crust that been subducted is what we call intraplate so intra means in or inside so inside of the plate so this is the same type of earthquake that caused the mexico city event in 2017 it was wind zone intraplate subduction zone event uh, another thing uh, that makes this earthquake particularly that you know that that can make these earthquake dangerous is that they can occur very very deep and uh, they occur directly beneath your feet so uh, when those waves come up they haven't had a chance really to attenuate at all they are coming straight beneath you so they hit you with a little warning uh, and they can have huge ground motion so interplay events uh, interplay events uh, result in huge rupture zones they can produce tsunamis and trouble play events usually have smaller magnitude uh, but they occur very deep very deep beneath the ground surface uh so inter interplate event uh, they are deep they are small but they can be very very damaging 
because they are directly beneath your feet. So now oh, the beach bar for that type of events looks something like this. Now remember your eyeball is up here and it's looking straight down at the interface right here. And this is where it's going to see. This is your strike. You have one massive zone over here of compression and one massive zone over here of tension. That is the tail symbol of the subduction zone seismic source in beach ball notation. So an example of these sources would be uh, Cascadia subduction zone of the northeast coast of the United States. Uh, well, let's talk a little bit about the size of the earthquake. So now, when we talk about the size of the earthquake, we generally are talking about the earthquake magnitude, okay? Uh, and we are going to into a little bit of the history of the magnitude. Uh, and why magnitude is one of the most misunderstood and mischaracterized terms when it comes to dealing with the earthquake. Uh, now, there are two principal ways of seismologists, uh, geologists, engineers who are used to describe the size of an earthquake. The first way is not magnitude, it's intensity. It's intensity. I was told once by a structural colleague, friend of mine, uh, and a structural engineer, in call from the mind that the magnitude really is you know it can relate to the ferocity of an earthquake uh, but the reality is intensity is, is a much more telling term in terms of how violent an earthquake can be uh, it, it how strong the shake is in the quake I think that's what he call it is the shake in the quad that determines how damaging an earthquake can be and so the amount of shake in a quake is its intensity but then we deal with the earthquake magnitude uh, and that's something that everyone's familiar with uh, it's what we always hear from the reporters whenever we hear about an earthquake on the news so Let's understand these two terms, okay? Earthquake intensity before instruments were ever inverted seismologists. Early seismologists wanted to have a way to be able to map and to quantify the amount of quake or the amount of shake in a quake. But they had no way to do it other than to ask people, hey, how hard does your house shake? Was it really bad where you live? Describe it for me. So, so they had to rely on subject surveys from people. So these surveys, they would be sent out uh, and they would ask people to respond back and describe how strong the shaking was at their different house. And they came up with a set of constant descriptors and they assigned a number to each of these descriptors. Uh, these numbers ranging from usually 1 to 10 or maybe 1 to 12, okay? 1 being the smallest and 12 being at the end of the world. So now, there is a lot of different scales and descriptions that have been developed by different seismologists for different intensity models. Uh, some of more popular ones that have been around like Uh, a rosy uh, hole model that ha uh, that we use heavily in Italy that modify Marcelli index used more commonly now. Uh, it's used is probably the one that's used the most frequently around the world. That the uh, Medvedev. Spoon Hoyer harmonic intensity model is used mostly in Eastern Europe and portion of Russia, and then the uh, JM 
scale for intensity, the Japanese Metrological Agency scale. This is used uh, predominantly in Japan. Okay, so one that we are going to talk about and use uh, and refer to in this class is the MMI, Modifier Mercury Index. So, here some examples of uh, what these uh, descriptions are in, uh, in MMI. So, imagine being someone whose house uh, was shaken, you are shaken, you are trying to still kind of piece together your life and the assets, the damage of your home and then someone comes and knocks on your door uh, and maybe in the mail you get an envelope uh, and it has a little survey in it. It says, uh, will you please uh, circle the number that best describes the shaking that you felt at your house. And so you can see, you know, some of these descriptions are like number five was uh, felt by nearly everyone. Many were evacuated, uh, some dishes, windows, etc. were broken. There were some cracked plaster. Uh, unstable objects over time. So I like this one. Uh, pendulum clock must stop. They discovered that, uh, that they did some research and found that it takes a very specific acceleration exceeding a specific uh, calibration to stop a pendulum clock. Uh, and and so it is interesting they included that in there but uh, uh, anyway you can kind of see of some of these descriptions you know feel free to pause this uh, lecture or read some of these to get feel uh, read some of these uh, to get a feel you can see this one goes all the way up to the eight. Yeah, so you know some uh, pretty big descriptions there. Uh, so now once you have, you know people start returning their service, they circle the number uh, and they indicate the address of their house. Uh, seismologist uh, then can take the address, take the number uh, that associated, that the intensity number associated with their address and they can start plotting numbers on the map. So once you start plotting numbers on a map, then you can uh, start drawing some tours of intensity. Uh, and so then you end up with what are called ISO seismic map. Now the beauty of ISO seismic map is that don't require any instrument. They are all just based of people self-reporting based on a standard set of descriptions. So the people become the instrument, so to speak. The advantage of it is that we can take like a newspaper descriptions of earthquakes and descriptions in papers journals of old earthquakes uh, and we can back calculate so to speak what the intensity was or at least come up with our best estimate so you can come up with math like this. Uh, Look at this, this is an estimated MMI intensity map from 1811 and 1812 earthquake uh, and it's based of general and the newspaper entries from the day. So you can see, you know exactly how energy was dissipated with distance away from the source of the event which happened right here at this point, okay. So today we discuss the subduction zone and then we talk about 
the earthquake intensity so uh, that was all for today uh, if you guys have any questions you can ask thank you for the participation in the class uh, check here